Hello and welcome to The Solve Network. My name is Shane Borza and I'll be your host. Along with my co-founder, Benjamin Goss, we'd like to welcome you. Our mission is to provide solutions and create a network of experts for you to learn from. Now, this show is a little different than most podcasts, as it is actually a live call held twice a month. If you can, please join us on the first and third Thursday of each month so you can get your questions answered live and direct from the experts themselves. If you're an expert, please contact me at shaneborza.com so you can be a part of the network. And now, here's our show. Hi, everyone. This is Shane. Welcome to another Mastermind Call with the Solve Network. Tonight, we have Jennifer Pressamone as our guest expert. She is a holistic aromatherapist, as well as an herbalist, an author, and an international educator. She's going to be talking about a number of things in regards to health and wellness, coaching, and aromatherapy. So really excited to have her with us tonight. And after her presentation, please listen for a Q&A and discussion with other people who are live on the call. Hi, I'm Shane Borza, a climber, creator, and coach. And I want you to build the skill of health and fitness. My new course is a priceless gift to you, and it's available exclusively on PonoQuest.com. That's P-O-N-O Quest.com. Build the Skill is a minimalistic, functional, real-world fitness program, which can help you to move better and get stronger faster. I can't wait for you to check it out. And when you do, please let me know how it helps you. That's build the skill at PonoQuest.com. I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer, and I can't wait to hear more about everything you're going to talk about tonight. So welcome to the call. Hi, Shane. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you and with everybody sharing um, a passion that's near and dear to my heart. That's aromatherapy and health. Um, as you said, I, I am a clinical aromatherapist and herbalist. Um, you know, I got into health and wellness for my, I actually didn't get into it. It got into me. <laughs> So, you know, I think some people's journey, you have challenges and you make the decision to seek out natural health. For me, I was very sick and I didn't know natural health existed. So thankfully, you know, it was placed in front of me for me to, to understand that. And through my own personal triumphs and challenges, you know, I've been able to help other people and coach other people and also collaborate, which I think we're doing tonight, which I think is so important um, because we all have our specialties. So, you know, my specialty, I speak essential oils. I love aromatherapy. Um, you know, so when I'm working with somebody, I'm translating that into, oh, this would make a great blend. This person, you know, these are the great features and we need to support those features. But then what else is imbalanced that I can support through creating custom aromatherapy blends so we can connect more authentically to ourselves. So, you know, um, professionally, I've done a lot in aromatherapy. Personally, um, I use it in my, you know, with myself, with my family. I use it with my pets. Um, and I'm an auntie of many. And so I'm kind of the person that they go to for that. So that's a little bit about me. Um, and then what I wanted to share with you guys was about um, how can you use aromatherapy to drive your actions through your mindset and through motivation. Because, you know, we all know that healing starts in the mind. Um, you know, if we believe it, we can do it. That's so important. Um, and, you know, we have to find a way to overcome any limiting beliefs that are hindering us from reaching our full potential, but not only our potential, but the people that we're working with. Um, the people in our lives, our family, our friends, our neighbors. Um, and so we have to really tap into, all right, how do I shift my mindset? A, you know, where is my mindset? We have to ask that question. And then, you know, B, okay, if it's not where I need it to be, what can I do to get it where I need to be? And, and that's where the collaboration comes in. We have to build a community 
a lot of times we're not honest with ourselves. We keep thinking, no, I'm going to push that away. That's why you need a good friend who's going to be honest with you and tell it to you straight. Um, so if you don't know, ask a really good friend around you, how am I? And, um, you know, they'll be real good to tell you that. And, you know, shifting that mindset and that motivation where it's moving you forward, um, you know, that's going to create movement and momentum because anything that you're focused on right now, that's where you're going to go. It's like when you're driving your car, if you're looking over here, you're going to go here. So you really need to stay focused because that's what, you know, you're going to be getting. That's where you're going to go. Um, so an integrative approach that I use for health and in life is um, creating some daily habits, having a routine. I know A blood types like routine, like myself. O blood types, they kind of go with the flow and want cliff notes. And yeah, you know, I'll just get around to it. Just make me a list and I'll get to it whenever. Um, you know, but having a routine is really important. I think in times like now, when there's so much uncertainty and there's so much craziness and we're having to shift and pivot um, into an unknown, you know, an uncharted territory. But not only is it good kind of for a daily routine, but if you ever get off track, you fall off the wagon, you get lost, something to help you rebound. So when you're lost, when somebody that you're working with is lost, you've got to have a system that gets you back on track. Um, so that's why I like that. So for me, I identify and gather what that team is. Is it, um, is it like lifestyle changes? So is it that I have to incorporate exercise? Um, do I need to start journaling? Um, you know, what are my sleep habits? There's different things. So you have to identify what that is. Is it a chiropractor? Is it an aromatherapist? Is it a, a motivational coach, a mindset coach? And then you build your me toolbox. So you have to work on yourself. Um, and, and that's so important to build your toolbox because everybody's toolbox might be different. What I need might be different than what you need. So you have to have that serious talk with yourself and then creating that healthy lifestyle of food, hydration, movement, sleep, having fun. Because I think a lot of people forget to put fun as a pillar of health. We have to laugh. There's so much science that shows laughing increases our immune system. It can encourage your cells because your cells, your tissues, your muscles, everything in you believes everything you tell it. So you need to be telling it something good and surrounding it by something positive. Um, having a daily connection with yourself. If you hit the ground running from the moment you open your eyes to the moment you close your eyes at the end of the day, then you know, you're not connected. So you have to stop and say, all right, let me check in with myself. How am I doing? You ask everybody else, how are you? But do you look in the mirror and ask yourself, how are you doing? You know, how am I doing today? How am I physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically? Um, because again, what you are focused on is what you're going to get at the end of the day. Um, and then by making that connection, you're going to unblock any barriers that might be in your way that's not allowing your brilliance, your talents to shine through because we're all brilliant in some capacity, you know, so we need to be able to thrive in that environment. So we have to be able to unblock any blockages um, and infuse that positive energy. So I just wanted to share why I do it. Um, just to get a little personal, sanity versus being overwhelmed. I don't know if you've ever said it in the daytime. Oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. Okay, well, let's get not overwhelmed. And how do we do that? Routines, systems, being confident and competent in what you're doing, you know, can accomplish that. But providing a sanity, um, being focused rather than wandering aimlessly, unintentionally. Because I know the sign, you know, not all who wander are lost, um, but some are. <laughs> some are very lost and it's unintentional. So we need to have that focus. We need energy. We should be energized in what we do, not exhausted. We should be productive and not spinning our wheels in no direction with no traction. And this was a big one for me, and I, and I work on this constantly. It's guilt-free boundaries, setting healthy boundaries rather than giving in to an unfulfilling, you know, people pleasing mentality of, 
I'm doing it out of guilt, responsibility, obligation, you know, I'm dutiful. We have to, we're allowed to be fulfilled. It's kind of like the bank, you know, if you put money, if you take money out, you have to put money in so it equals out. So we need to be able to replenish ourselves. And so some tips on how I climbed my mountain, um, you know, one of the um, motivational thoughts that gets me through some of my most challenging days is the thing that you are most scared of is what can set you free. So when I'm stopping and I'm not doing something, I'm like, all right, well, why am I stopping and why am I afraid of that? And let me turn that around into courage and let me just do it. Let me create some action steps to move forward. So for me, I had health challenges. Um, you know, uh, almost 20 years ago, I had a debilitating uh, gut issue. Um, I had Crohn's and colitis and the doctors had told me I had six months to live. I didn't know I had a choice to live. And so luckily, you know, I didn't give up and I had the right tools that were put in, in place for me, but it didn't just happen that way. I had to have some mind shifting and I had to reflect on what actually is going on right now. I just got some bad news. How am I going to process this? And I, sometimes when you get news, you have to upshift to keep going. And sometimes you have to downshift, taking a step back. I had to analyze, you know, and overcome some limiting beliefs. My limiting belief at the time was I'm going to die in six months. Um, I didn't know I could live. And so that's why I say natural health found me because it, it, it showed me I can live and I'm still here 20 years later. I had to recognize that I was in a crucial moment. So I was at a, at a crossroads. I mean, you know, I could live or die and not everybody's is that dramatic, but this was my journey. And I share this because maybe you can take something away of where you are in your journey right now. Um, you know, but you have to recognize this crucial moment and then, you know, your influential awareness, this was key for me is to recognize that I had opportunities present. My sister said, oh, there's a local herb shop in town. Maybe you can go there and talk to them. Maybe they have something for you. You know, I was down to like 80 something pounds and I thought, oh, well, I need some bodybuilding herbs to pump me up or I need something because I have, this is a whole new world to me. And the right person was put in front of me for, and listened to me. She took the time to listen to me. That's huge in, in coaching and what we do. Um, but then she provided a solution that was customized to what I needed at that moment, at, at, you know, where I was in my journey, um, and provided me with opportunities that I, I then knew about. I had to seize the moment. So I had to create and choose this plan I had to align with a path because when you're sick and when you're working with clients, sometimes they have a, all of the stimuli coming in, a lot of people telling them what to do, how to do it. Um, so what I do, it, what I had to do is I had to say, okay, I need to shut out the noise and decide what resonates with me. So when I'm working with clients, I tell them, I hear that you're all over the place. Just listen. What is your body telling you? Check in with yourself. What resonates with you? What aligns with you? It might be me. It might not be me. And that's okay because I'm still helping somebody at the end of the day find what they need. That's why I do this. Having um, the action steps, so a strategy and a plan, but you cannot just have a plan. You have to commit. You have to comply. And you have to hold yourself accountable. You need measurable accountability so you know that you're making progress because a lot of times it's a small win that get you through the day. <laughs> you know, it's not always the big thing at the end of, you know, the big prize. It's the small wins that get you there. Doing a growth assessment. And in that growth assessment, I used to be petrified to speak in front of people. Now I can speak in front of 5,000, 10,000 people and not pass out. But when I was first doing it, I got, got up in front of my mom and said, hi, my name is Jennifer and I passed out. I just was petrified. And so I would, if I would have given up, I would have never known that it's a gift of mine. I, I love teaching. I love blending a room with therapy. I would have never embraced that. And then that would have been a talent of mine that was wasted. So we have to be able to tap into those hidden talents and desires and dreams. 
And some of those dreams are ones we didn't know we had that are still coming. The, the best is yet to come. Having an acceptance to learn to love yourself for who you are and where you are right now. Because when you can authentically align with yourself, then you can authentically share with people. And that's where you're going to get big results. And then paying it forward. So my why is that my life was spared because I was meant to learn all of these lessons that I now can save somebody else. Because I do question, why was I saved over somebody else? Why me? But it's because I had this innate ability to listen and to use those tools and not just to take it and do nothing with it. You know, so that's that's what fuels me. So with aromatherapy, this is how... I do life, I do my health, um, you know, really integrating this because it's so powerful from mind and body. So I accidentally discovered it or it discovered me, you know, um, but I explored it. So when you have those opportunities, you need to explore what's put in front of you. Um, and so for me, what I do and, and when I'm helping my clients is I use the aromatherapy and the herbs to balance and balances, but you're not always working on what's broken. You need to support what's right. So we strengthen our strengths and strengthen our weaknesses. And then the aromatherapy and the herbs together in unity, you know, um, whether you're doing tinctures or um, flower essences or the whole herbs or supplements, is balancing the mind, the body, and our soul so we can authentically connect. We have this authenticity um, when our head, heart, and gut talks to each other, and they like each other, and they can communicate with each other. And that is the catalyst for change. So when we're talking motivation and mindset, aromatherapy taps in to that. It helps you to authentically align with yourself, providing you this valuable solutions. Um, it's giving you these amazing benefits because when you smell an essential oil, um, and if you have an essential oil, I encourage you to grab it. So if you have your oil, you can grab it. And I like to smell it from the cap. So, you know, you can smell what I have if you don't have one in front of you. Um, and so when we do that and we're breathing that in, through one scent, through one sniff, it is creating an influence. It's influencing our cells. It's influencing our body. So we're taking the scent in, going through the olfactory bulb so we can recognize it. And it goes to the brain. So your brain can assess what is this going to do for me? And then it travels down to your gut brain. So your gut brain can take action. So it's this one, two punch. It happens integratively. It has to work together. We can't separate that. So you're getting physical, mental, emotional, energetic, spiritual, environmental support all at the same time. It's all simultaneously not separated. So we have a lot of historical practices and uses. Um, we have a lot more evidence-based research today than we had years ago. We used, um, you know, in our ancient times with the Greeks and the Romans and the Egyptians, they did a lot more with the aroma psychology part of it. Then it kind of moved and morphed into more scientific and chemical and molecular um, aromatherapy. And then in the 1920 or in the um, 20th century, we had more of this infusion of getting back to, all right, now we need to not just look at the science part, we need to look at the art part of that of what is that doing for the mind, for our psyche. Um, so your essential oils, they are liquid extracts from your plants. So plants in nature do something. You know, some of them attract bugs, some of them repel them. The oil that's in the plant is there to protect it, to defend, um, to heal it from injury, to help provide nutrients at a cellular level. So when we take that essence and create an essential oil with that, it's doing the same thing for us physiologically, psychologically, and biochemically. So we look at those plant signatures of like, what is it doing in its plant nature? And we translate that for our human and animal health that we're using it for. So we're looking at the personality. So Lavender, we know, is very harmonizing. So it's going to bring harmony in the body. 
We know um, your helichrysum flowers, it's very strong and vulnerary properties. That means it's gonna be wound healing. So if we have a wounded soul, a wounded ego, a wounded emotions, a wounded body of any, uh, anywhere, you know, that it's gonna help with that. So we're looking again, physical, mental, emotional, everything simultaneous. And then we have that limbic activation Right? So we have the brain activation to assess, and then the gut is going to help us take action. So, you know, common is lavender. You know, people smell lavender and usually they relax. Um, so that's the response that we're going to get from using it. And so these are the outcomes that we're going for implementing it in your daily routine. It's going to help you to tap in to what's going on once you learn aromatherapy. So I do twofold. I help my clients with aromatherapy, but then I have a school and I train people in aromatherapy because I teach you, you have to know what, what does it mean? How do you translate this? If I'm really attracted to a scent, what does that mean? What's it telling me? We translate that personality because then it identifies the roadblocks. So very common when you smell your oils, I'm asking you, well, how do you feel? And where are you feeling it? Because if you're feeling it in the throat region, then that's telling you, oh, you're not speaking up about something. So whatever the soil is, it connected there, it can help you with that. Um, and then it opens up your imagination. It helps you realize solutions. So sometimes whenever you're in the midst of a tough case or a tough situation, you got to walk away clear the mind and come back in. In aromatherapy, we do coffee beans to cleanse the palate, right? We have to cleanse our, our cognitive palate too. Um, and aromatherapy is a great tool for that to bring you to this mind-body alignment. And so when you use aromatherapy, you know, if you're going to use that and for yourself or in your profession, um, you know, choosing what you need. So where are you at mentally, emotionally, physically yourself or your client? What are the goals and the dreams? What is the purpose defining the why? Um, what's holding you back for moving forward? Um, and then what do you have? What's in your aromatherapy basket? Maybe you just have lavender and orange. Okay, well then that's the answer. <laughs> and so maybe we put them together or we use them individually and then you can smell it to see if you like it or not. And if you're just getting used to aromatherapy, I would say go with scents that you like for now. Um, but those ones that you don't like is telling you what's buried what you have a wall in front of that you're not willing to work on right now, but you need to. And it doesn't mean, oh, well, then if I need to work on it, I have to go do it. No, it's kind of like a massage. You have to work your way into it. Peel the onion back, you know, get to that layer so you're ready to work on that. So some sense that you can use for focus and concentration. So we're getting in our mindset. We're focused and we can concentrate. That's going to be your lemon because that's gonna light your path. Lemon is yellow, it's like sunlight. So if you ever lose your way, lose your identity, that helps you find your way back to yourself um, or find your way through a tough challenge. Rosemary um, is very significant for memory. Um, so remembering and for focus. And spearmint is very good during times of transition. Now, when you're using aromatherapy, there are safety precautions like lemon is phototoxic. You're not going to put it on the skin and go out in the sun. So there is some contraindications that you want to be careful of. You um, people doing certain medications, we want to be careful of health conditions like high blood pressure. If you are having high blood pressure, Rosemarinus officinalis can be too stimulating for high blood pressure. But you could do a Rosemarinus verbenum. The verbenone has a different chemistry to it that doesn't have that elevating with for the high blood pressure. Um, so knowing your safety guidelines. And then some scents you can use for motivation, eucalyptus, whenever you feel overwhelmed and you need room to breathe, or you feel like, oh my gosh, I just need to run and get out of here. Um, that's going to be your eucalyptus. Cinnamon, I have coined, it's really a hug in a bottle when you just need a big hug. Um, you know, there's loneliness. You need to ignite your inner fire. You need to ignite that passion. And lemongrass, you know, is going to inspire flexibility. 
um, flexibility to change, shift, and pivot, which I think we're all going to be masters of at the end, you know, of these next few months. And then the ways you can do that is you can diffuse them. So put them in a diffuser. I don't know if you can see the one I have going back here, but you diffuse that, get it in the air. If you don't have a diffuser, you can get um, a bowl and put some salt in there, Epsom salt, and just drizzle some oil on top and let that serve as your diffuser, um, adding it into an aromatic bath, mixing it in the salts, and then putting it in your bath water, you know, massage oil, creating specialty roll-ons that you can use, you know, for headaches or for focus and concentration. Um, but whatever you do, even if you just have one essential oil and you open it and you smell it, add something into your daily routine because again, activation of the mind, healing starts in the mind and we need to activate our thought process to connect. Um, so it's a really good way to connect. So you hold the cards to your consistent mindset, right? So connect and communicate. Rally your team. What's going to help you stay connected and communicate? Do your affirmation statements, your positive affirmation statements every day. And I'm going to challenge you to add your aromatherapy in when you do it. Your daily routine, create your daily habits with aromatherapy. Um, diffusing it, because diffusing it, that's going to help you release stagnation. When you're stuck and stagnant, you're not moving forward. You don't have a good mindset. Your motivation is not going to be so high. And then self-care. So putting those daily deposits into the bank of you. You have to deposit. You cannot continuously give without receiving. So some motivational tips that I enjoy, that I like, are motivation, I mean, movement with exercise, dancing, get the blood flow in, having fun, smelling your oils having a positive community, creating a dream board, and anything that you're doing, diffuse your oils while you're doing that because there's, there's research that show anything you do where you match scent to it, you will remember that more. It embeds that more. It creates a more positive environment. Creating those daily action steps towards your bigger goal and celebrating the small wins. You know, we and reward yourself for those small wins because it's huge. In doing all of this, you are going to have a healthier mindset. You're going to be more in harmonious alignment with head, heart, and gut. That's going to fuel your motivation, which will fuel your motion. And when you are in motion, you build momentum. An object in motion stays in motion. We need to continue that. So design your plan, align and connect to your deepest, innermost core level. Because when you do that, you can shine a light on what you do and it will come through you. You have this world of possibilities, you know, that you're open to, that you can be aware of, that you can be cognizant of whenever you're open. So your homework is I want you to write down what your top two dreams are, what is stopping you, honestly, from achieving them, why haven't you conquered them, and what are you going to do about it, or what are you not willing to do about it, right? So we're not going to do that. We're just going to, what are we going to do about it? We're going to take action. We're going to build that motion and that momentum to make our plan. So your self-care action steps, because I'm a firm believer, if you have the skill to do something, you will do it. I can tell you don't stress. Okay, that's hard. But if you have the skill to reduce your stress, then you will do that. So smell an essential oil or an essential oil blend um, every day. And then whenever you're stressed, I want you to take three deep breaths. So put your arms behind your back because if your arms are back, you can't slouch. If you do this, you can slouch. You can't slouch this way. And we need all of our lung chambers, right? We need air, belly breathing. Tell yourself something good. Tell yourself something positive that you love about yourself. What are you thankful for today? What's important for you to accomplish today? What do you have to accomplish that you will feel 
rejuvenated and rewarded for? Whose life are you going to impact? Have a cup of, of warm herbal tea, you know, that's just very nourishing um, for us or a cup of joe. If you like coffee, do coffee. Um, connecting to your faith, laughing and telling somebody that you love them. You know, we have to be on this journey together. So I leave you um, with uh, inspiration. Be stronger than what's holding you back. What's holding you back? And be stronger than that. It's so important. I'll turn it back over to you, Shane. Thanks so much, Jennifer. That was uh, so much more than I had expected. I don't have a lot of experience with aromatherapy, but through various things I've done in my life, it's it's kind of been, uh, I've been aromatherapy adjacent. <laughs> but, uh, but it tied into a lot of the practices that I do, but it kind of elevated them. And I also saw a lot of like integrating almost yeah. like um, another level. Uh, so one of the things I talk a lot about coming from like a biohack, life hack, background is, you know, stacking the hack, you know, so how can you, you know, 10 X the impact of a certain thing, right. by combining it with other things. True it integration. Doesn't... I mean, we have, we are in a place of integrative health right now. We, one thing is not going to solve an issue. We have to pull in resources to do that. So I'm, I'm so excited that I can open you up to this world of aromatherapy because it's huge. It's huge. And what we all do. Mm -hmm. Well, a couple things that you said, so uh, I'm going to open it up and see if uh, we have a couple other people in the call if they have any questions, but I, uh, it, it, one of the things you mentioned, you were talking about if you have a certain reaction to a smell or something like that, and it brought to mind, you know, I'm in, and you were talking about, you know, having tea or a cup of joe here at the end, <laughs> so, so uh, I come from the bulletproof lifestyle and uh, the Bulletproof Coaching Academy and, and that kind of stuff. So of course I drink Bulletproof coffee. And one of the things that I've learned to enjoy is instead of adding lists of, you know, things I have to do, it's taking things and turning them into something that I look forward to doing. So instead of, oh, I have to get up and make coffee, it's you know, getting rid of the coffee pot and getting a French press and having a canister with fresh ground coffee that's airtight so that way when I open it first thing in the morning, I get that like a rush of the fresh coffee. Yes. So when you mentioned the coffee beans, I was like, oh, I never thought of that as like aromatherapy, but mm -hmm. that is something that, because I get up early, I train, and then I come in and I get the coffee started. And just that little moment every morning of like opening the canister, and I realized in that moment when you said that, I was like, oh, I don't just open the canister. I like literally bring the canister up and like do this big- You do inhale. aromatherapy. Yes, and I breathe in and I I realized like, oh, I actually like grinned to myself like, oh, this is so great. This is one of my daily pleasures of making the coffee. And I found that that happens because I made it a little more uh, physicalized. You know, I. I have to literally press the coffee myself. I'm pouring the water in and I'm right. scooping the coffee grounds in. When I just had a coffee pot, it was just like you press the button and you walk away and and I wasn't there to It's appreciate. not an experience. Yes. And so again, the, the idea of aromatherapy is like adding in a layer to things I'm already doing. And that mm -hmm. came up really strongly to, me, uh, strongly to me. But the thing that that led me to, which is what I want, I was going to see if you could discuss is I've heard a lot, uh, I have a lot of, history, you know, taking history classes and things like that. And, uh, you know, one of the things they talk about is you can look at photos or videos of the past uh, and you might be even, even able to hear like the voices of the past or the music of the past, but you can't taste or smell the past. And quite often people will talk about a smell will bring them instantly back to a certain place or a certain time. So from the aromatherapy kind of side, I don't know if you can speak to that. Is there something about 
the smell that lights up memory or connects us in that way. I know you mentioned there's a lot of different kinds of connections and things that happen in the body and the mind with aromatherapy, but is that something you can talk about? Yeah, we have something called the limbic system. And so the limbic system has these different processes, right? So when we take in a scent, first of all, your scent, your sense of smell is the only sense that you have that doesn't go through the spinal cord or the, the digestive tract. It's instant. And not only is it instant, it's non-judgmental. So when you take in a scent, it's never going to let you lie to yourself. So that's kind of where that comes. Um, your sense of smell teaches you how to taste. So oftentimes when taste gets off, smell will be off and vice versa. But we have the limbic system. So when we go in, we have these um, olfactory receptor sites. We have the olfactory bulb for scent processing, but we also have the hypothalamus, um, you know, which is where we're converting our memories. So we do have a memory box embedded within the limbic system. Um, the amygdala, for example, is a place of where we manage fear and aggression. So for people going through post-traumatic stress, we really have to work on strengthening the amygdala and scent can do that. There's Our sense of smell, I mean, is responsible for so many things that happen in our body. When you smell, it causes, it influences, it changes, it inspires, you know, the, the shifts with physical things going on, but also emotional, but and the biochemical. So it, it can feed into hormone transmission, neurotransmitter, um, which again, we know everything is interactive. You know, it's interrelated, interregulated that way. So our limbic system, you know, we, we have that area. And so we have to pay attention. So traumatic brain injuries alters. If we have any damage, to any of those processes, any head traumas, our sense of smell is going to be affected, right? And there's science actually showing right now our olfactory bulb is the portal in which viruses enter. So it's not surprising that we see with people experiencing these heavy duty viruses that they lose their sense of smell. But I'll tell you, Remember, we have physiological, psychological, and biochemical shifts. So even if you can't smell something like with anosmia, you're still getting a benefit from that. So, you know, and like you said, with the coffee, it's an experience, you know, and it's awesome that you recognize that about yourself of, okay, how can I bring the, a joyful experience in? And it just so happened to surround scent you know, but that's what we need to be doing because that's where we are going to have memories and not all memories are happy. You know, when I work with, um, with traumatic, especially women going through traumatic events, sometimes there's a scent associated with that that's not pleasant. So what we do is we match up a pleasant scent to overcome and overrule the bad scent. So we do the true art form of aroma therapy, the therapy side of it to bring balance to something that's not balanced. Scene one, Apple, take one. Hi, I'm Shane Borza, your content creator coach. I have two books on filmmaking, Film Notes, where you learn to write, direct, and produce, and the Film Notes workbook, where you can learn checklists and paperwork to streamline creating your content. Available at shaneborza.com. I also have filmmaker resources like the paperwork bundle with over 300 documents, the sound effects bundle with almost 3,000 files, and the music bundle featuring 900 tracks of all genres. Want to build your professional credits? Become an associate producer and get listed on IMDb let me help you get your art out into the world. Scene one, Apple, take one. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Solve Network. As a reminder, these calls are held live on the first and third Thursday of each month. If you'd like to join us as either a listener or guest expert, please contact me at shaneborza.com. On behalf of my co-founder, Benjamin Goss, we're glad you are a part of the network 
and hope you are finding solutions. If you need solutions, please reach out.